Yeah, so our relationship with Kasabian started in 2011. And it's actually a kind of four-way relationship. It's not just with the band, but their creative director, Aitor Throop, and also their lighting designer, Nick Gray. So it's kind of like between the four of us that the show comes together. Um, yeah, that started in 2011. So from the outset, our aim was to turn rock and roll on its head, to turn the kind of tired equipment and tired approach um, and tired techniques on their head. And you know, bring something fresh and progressive to the rock and roll stage and something that was dynamic and meaningful. Something that we really wanted to do with Kasabian was um, have a sense of kind of real-time animation or animation that responded in real-time to, to audio or perhaps use these live camera feeds of the band and translate those into, into graphics. Um, and I think that was because we we wanted it to feel alive and we wanted it to feel different every night. We didn't want it to be a playback thing where you just hit play. We wanted it to really respond. Um, and our second idea was what if we turned those cameras that, that are there at the show filming the gig, what if we turn those onto the crowd and include the crowd into the show? And that really came about, that really came to life actually for the last track that the band play called Lost Souls Forever. And we worked with Andreas Muller writing code for this, which was face tracking software. So he wrote some software that looked for faces in the crowd and through graphics connected all these faces with the word soul in the middle of this circle. Um, it was great because we, we ended up connecting all these lost souls in the crowd and we would take photos of this in real time. So with a press of a key, we would take a, take a photo through the software that would upload that to Facebook so the next day people were tagging themselves in, in all the shots. Um, and it's amazing, it was different every night, it felt alive and it felt, it felt progressive and contemporary. Originally in 2011 it took about four months um, to create all the content. It, the content was so rich, it was you know CG, a lot of live action, high speed, um, as I say, every, every track was a, a different scene in, these, in, in this software that Andreas had written. So, um, yeah, there was, there, was, there was a lot of work, um, but it was about four months' work for the first show. That has been touring for nearly three years, so between iTour and Nick Gray and myself, um, the show has been updated as, 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 we've, as we've gone on. Um, of course, they headlined Glastonbury this year, which was a massive show for them, and I think Nick and Itor were working on that show for about a year. Um, and one of the great things that Itor came up with was turning the black stage, the black rock and roll stage, into a white box, um, a gallery space. So all the, the roof and, and the walls were mechanical. So as the band came out and as the countdown progressively counted down to zero, the, the, the pyramid stage turned into a white gallery space. Um, which was amazing for us, for content, because it meant that it was a contemporary white space, it was turning rock and roll on its head once more, and it meant that we could update the software and also make new content. Um, the art direction had changed. It was all about future psychedelia, um, pink and black, with a real punkness to it. So the brief for my tour was to do things you would, you'd never do, you wouldn't do. Um, so we put a big word up there in Helvetica that would stay up there for the whole track. That became either an in-joke or words that meant something to the band as they were growing up. Um, but it was great. We, we were given kind of free reign and under ITOR's direction, we, we got to somewhere, you know, really great. You know, if a rock and roll project can't be fun, what can? And, you know, we, to do this in-house, whether we're shooting stuff at high speed, whether it's hardcore CGI, yeah, all in-house, all with our kind of junior team. And then, as I said before, a sprinkling of real experience, so a sprinkling of specialists. Uh, for Kasabian, that was Andreas, specialist software and, and, and coder from, who studied at Hyper Island, who's, you know, amazing. Um, but apart from that, yeah, it was a fresh kind of young approach. I think the technique I enjoyed the most was for Switchblade Smiles. And Aitor had just designed Kasabian's album and each single had a different feather, a different black feather. And so we decided to rig a kind of, a kind of make this 
fucked up animal that kind of um, responded to audio. So Reiner, an animator here, rigged this um, black kind of mess. Um, and it was rigged in such a way that it could respond to audio in real time. And, and that was great. I think it was a really great example of something that was born out of the album that we took all the way across to the live show. Um, and that was a, a real highlight for us and a, a technique that works really well. I think the biggest challenge is working, especially in a festival scene, is that unless you're headlining, you know, there are no rehearsals. It needs to work once and it needs to work um, obviously, a, a lot of that pressure lies on a production manager and, and, and the crew. Uh, for us, I think, you know, making sure that we, that we have full production rehearsals here in London and simplifying things to such a degree that it is hit play on software. And, you know, thanks to Andreas and his kind of robust software, everything worked fine. There's always that, you know, slight danger that it might not, but um, don't, don't tell the band that. <laughs> It's so far so good, it's always worked.